started. I expect a few stragglers to be uh, coming in and joining us, but um, just want to get started. Thank you for coming and welcome to the Sanford Strong Coalition. We visit our November meeting. It's amazing to me how time flies. Um, I'd like for everyone to go around and introduce yourself, where you're from, and since today we're talking about resiliency, I'll give you a minute to think about this. Try to think of a time in your life when you demonstrated or witnessed resiliency. And um, I just found out 30 seconds ago that I'm supposed to lead by example and give you an example. So this is just the first one that popped into my head. I took the PLTI, Parent Leadership Training Institute course, uh, all starting in the fall of last year through May of this year. Well, it happened through my mom got very sick and I literally lived at the hospital with her and the only time I ever left her side was to come here to PLTI class because I knew that she would want me to be at that class and she wouldn't want me to skip it for anything. So I kind of thought that might be an example of resiliency that I could have let it just kind of suck me down and keep me there, but I persevered and pushed forward and continued to come and then graduated and now I'm going to be facilitating starting in January. I'll be facilitating class. Oh, my name is Becky Brown. Sorry, I forgot to say that. I work at North Parish Church, but my role here primarily is a mom. That's why I come to these meetings, because I care about Sanford, I love Sanford, and I love our youth, and I want my son to have a great city to grow up in. So, uh, Stephanie, can I just, when you yes. maybe since you were here, oh, okay. can, can you, um, can you before, I'm going to let you go last, since you're going to think about, could you give a one minute or 25 word definition of resiliency? So people know what kind sure. of you're giving? I don't think I have it on my notes, but okay. <laughs> Let's more time to go. See what you, see what you can come up with. Right now? Yeah. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all sit here and wait. Like, like. <laughs> 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 do you want to do it? Can you do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's got this whole prep, she's got this whole thing. I'm just like, did this how do I not make a 45 yes, minute presentation pared down to 25 words? <laughs> okay, so resiliency in 25 words or less is is um, when you have an adverse experience and come out stronger. The idea of resiliency is, is that, we, we, that we all have struggles, challenges, adverse experiences, and we move through them and we come out stronger. And that's sort of the, 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 the really basic idea of resiliency, that, that you know, it's not about not having adverse experiences, but having them, struggling, and, and, and um, coming out stronger and more skilled and that sort of thing. So, so now we will move on to you. Hi, I'm Stephanie Brock. Um, I work at Springdale Public House and I'm here to support Megan. And I'm not quite sure what else I'm supposed to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't quite think of any sort of examples of resiliency off the top of my head, so I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, putting you on the spot, Lori. Okay, we're saying our name and where we're from, and if we can think of an example of a time when we witnessed resiliency or experienced resiliency in life ourselves. Working with Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> in my enemies. And now you have to introduce yourself. Lori Higby, the Sanford Parks Recreation. Marcel's my boss. Okay. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Carey. I work for Mandy Hydro Health and Crisis Response Services. And I think, I, I mean, I can really have a quick answer, but I mean, I just think probably doing what I do for work every day and just some of the traumatic situations that we see with people who are um, in crisis, suicides, family members, deaths, you know, things like that. Probably and just getting up the next day and doing it again. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Powell, I'm in healthcare emergency department here in Stanford, and I would say kind of similar. But the first thing that popped in my head was medical school. I mean, I was oh, like, yeah. I was so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so and you come out stronger, but yeah, you think you're gonna not make it through. So, uh, Martin McKeon, I'm the project manager of Pathways Development, the Grant, and I have 
seeing resiliency constantly. Um, mm -hmm. Students who have resilience of problems and challenges that would have completely, completely floored me mm -hmm. when I was their age. Mm -hmm. But it's just a different world and I think they're more resilient. At least I hope they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm Ellie Mario. I'm a graduate of Terry uh, at Sanford Schools this year. Um, I think I've seen a lot of resiliency in the clients that I've worked with throughout my experience. Um, something that I always care of me as I work at a homeless shelter for pregnant women and their babies, and um, just seeing everything they go through and um, all the adversity that they face every day, the challenges that they deal with, it just screams resilience to me. So. Mm -hmm. I'm Connie Groom, I work for Parks and Healthy Communities, and um, with my job I see a lot of resiliency within myself because, you know, when you're working with drugs and alcohol and trying to prevent it, you just constantly run up barriers and obstacles and a lot of things that we out of control and, you know, just hang in there. And in my personal life, um, you know, several years ago my husband was diagnosed with cancer and, and he survived it and he's still living and healthy today. And, that made us all as a family really strong mm -hmm. and resilient. So I think that anything else is kind of low on the radar right now. So. Mm -hmm. I'm Stacey Dan, and I'm a bit, uh, home visitor for me families. And I too, every day with my job, the families I work with, so they will come and just keep on going. Mm -hmm. uh, Betsy Kelly with Farmers for Healthy Communities. I would say. Uh, the time in my life would have been, or when I worked was with a like, homeless shelter and, and watching all the families and the people who came through there and how um, resilient they were, which makes me realize that, you know, there's things in my life that seem huge, mm -hmm. which really aren't mm -hmm. as big as I think they are. Mm -hmm. um, I'm John Gordian, <coughs> I'm with Our Food Future, and um, I witness resiliency. Um, uh, watching my husband, um, if anybody saw him at the trunk, monkey trunks the mm -hmm. other day, that where we went, and um, because he has um, he has palsy and his right arm, and so um, yeah, so he's my example. Mm -hmm. My name is Kirsten McGarry. I work um, for our schools, our future in the uh, community outreach um, program, as well as a uh, program coordinator for the Sanford Batman program. I do both. Um, and it's your lucky day, because I am the poster child for resilience. <laughs> 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 um, from a very young age, just, just if, you know, it should zig when it should zag. It's the story of my life. Um, but no, I um, a couple years ago, if I have to give an example, a couple years ago, I had a whimsical idea to move away and start a new life somewhere else. Um, and when we got there, my son and myself, it didn't quite work out the way I had planned and um, then fix that with moving somewhere else to try to fix that. And you know what, surprise, didn't quite work out the way I planned. So, um, so just kept pushing my way through it. Um, him and I both are stronger because of it. Um, it's kind of changed him a little bit and made him a little bit more outgoing. He used to be pretty introverted and video games all day and now he tends to be more of an outdoor kid and social um, and it's taught me that being home is probably the best place to be in the world so the rest is just geography so pretty resilient. Yeah. Uh, I'm in Rachel Phipps and um, I'm Executive Director of Strategies for Stronger Sanford so I'm um, sort of uh, assist in the management of the Drug Free Communities Grant and the Nellie May Elite Community Partner Grant. And um, I would say for me, I mean, certainly I've witnessed it as everyone else has so much, but in my own life, um, what brought me to my knees was uh, when I had my first child and I got a severe postpartum depression. I mean, so unexpected. I was like, it was a plan of pregnancy. I was so excited, you know, and thought everything, everything in the world. And I just got a psychotic, psychosis type postpartum depression. And it was so difficult and, um, you know, it took months to get through it, but I did learn a ton about myself and chemistry and postpartum depression and, uh, and then, um, you know, feel like all of those lessons really helped me through. So I think the, the thing that has really stayed with me and what I hope to, I, I try to share with other people is it doesn't matter how bad things get, things will get better. Oh. 
Okay, I guess it's my turn now. Um, my name is Megan Bonke. I am 16 and I'm a junior at Stanford High School. Um, a time that I've like seen resilience, I've, I've seen it in myself with a lot of things that I've gone through, but in a lot of my friends. Um, because one of my friends has been struggling with depression and self-harm for a while, and just last week I helped her flush her razors and she's off of self-harm, so. But, um, okay, I'm going to start now. Um, um, this is actually the fourth time that I'm presenting this because I presented it to the health classes at Sanford High School, and there were students that came up to me after and were just like, can I hug you because you helped me so much by sharing what you did, and like, um, but um, today, like I said, I'm here to talk to you about me. Um, <laughs> uh, just, I'm partially kidding, but um, I'm here to tell you my story, how I overcame what I did, um, and how to foster resilience in yourself, your coworkers, and your students if you're, if you're teachers. Um, woo! Um, I'm from a small town in New Hampshire called Farmington. Do you um, have you guys like been through there, like Rochester? Do you guys know where Rochester is? Mm -hmm. Farmington's like ten minutes away from like the Home Depot in Rochester, um, but it has a population of six thousand seven hundred and eighty-six people as of the twenty ten census. Um, I grew up in that town of under seven thousand people. I lived in one house. I had like, the same room for like my entire life. Um, but I was also badly bullied there. Um, like, the, like the, a lot of the teachers wouldn't do anything. And if somebody, like, um, there was one specific time where I was waiting in the hallway to go into my history classroom. And then a couple guys came out of the boys' bathroom and started beating me up in the hallway. And I'm standing there and I'm just, and the, like the, the principal um, literally was just like, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? Um, but like if I fought back, I would have, I would have gotten the one that had been in trouble because apparently, but, but um, I think I'm pressing the right button. Woo! Um, two things here. Um, one, I want you to pay attention um, because you'll learn from this and it might even help you. But two, um, one thing that I saw from um, the quote from one of my favorite actresses, whose name is Catherine Tate. She was. Um, an actress on Doctor Who, but um, she said, please don't ever shut yourself away because you don't think you're good enough. Um, <coughs> uh, Farmington, I, uh, I like to call it a slice of hell. <laughs> um, it's like um, Ms. Hastings, who's our assistant band director here, congratulations to our Sanford marching band for getting the first gold. And yes! <laughs> director here and was a band director at Farmington for a while. Um, she compared, she was just like, it's like, Farmington is like hell on earth, the game, like the game Doom, except worse. Um, and yeah, kindergarten, there pretty much like nobody cared about like how you looked. They only cared if you, you know, like pick your nose or eat glue or whatever. Um, I was like, kindergarten, I was like, like a really, like really smart kid. Um, like every, like nothing bad happened that year. But growing up, I already knew that I was different from everybody because I liked uh, different things. Um, I exceeded the average grade. I always got good grades and you know, like good teacher comments on my report card. And I pretty much knew what social group I was going to end up in the moment that I stepped into school. Um, the next few years were full of being bullied because I was smart, but also because if anybody had ever needed like a hug or someone to talk to, I would always be there for them because I don't judge people on where they're from or what has happened to them in the past or whatever. Um, and I didn't understand why everybody was doing that because I'm a person like you, I'm a person like you. We're all people then. But um, when I was in the eighth grade, um, this is Sandra McDermott. She was one of my best friends growing up. Um, she was a year ahead of me. Um, she was a freshman in high school when I was an eighth grader. Um, and she was my best friend. She was being badly bullied to the point where she felt there was no way out because on June 17th, 2013, she committed suicide. Um, and that made my freshman year in high school like terrible because I, I no longer had that like sister kind of friendship. And she was always there for me. Like we'd eat breakfast at school together. We'd hang out on the playground or whatever. Um, like it wasn't a walk in the park. Um, I was, I, was, I was pushed down the center staircase a couple times in the school. Um, 
But uh, the first full day of school, I got punched in the eye. Um, and uh, I got beat up there, harassed by kids for being part of band. Um, by high school, most, almost all of the band kids had quit because they didn't want to be the subject of, of bullying. Um, and this is a subject that I'm really passionate about because in the past two and a half years, or in the past two and a half years, I have lost five friends to suicide. Um, and I would like, it's one thing when I was coming up with this, I was like, how long is it going to take for people to realize that teen suicide and depression is a serious problem and try to fix it, or at least bring it to somebody's attention? Because I'll see teen suicides on the news and I'm just like, Art, is nobody going to do anything about this? Um, but I wanted to talk about what depression is like. Um, everyone experiences sadness. Um, it's only temporary, and the sensation of that sadness soon passes. Um, however, a person with depression experiences a state that affects their everyday life, everyday life and suicidal feelings can occur. Um, you should never look at, um, at a mental illness as trivial because in reality it's harder to recover from a mental illness than it is um, to condition, um, or, uh, from a mental condition than a physical one. Um, anxiety is also something very hard to deal with. Um, the definition of depression, as described by dictionary.com, um, whose word of the day today is all about, by the way, land lover. Um, <laughs> um, but depression is a mood disorder causing a persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. Um, and the problem with depression is that, like, this comes from personal experience because I have struggled it with myself, but, um, like, you know you'll be okay, but you still feel awful. Um, you know, like, your family and your friends love you, but it doesn't really feel like they do. Um, you know doing something will make you better, but you just don't know how to. Um, and you want to be well, but you can't just seem to get there. Um, anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease. Um, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Uh, both of, like, when I presented this to the high school, both of them seemed a little hard to understand for, um, for them, so I kind of made it easier. Um, depression um, is often described by a lot of people that struggle with it as um, drowning, but being able to see everybody else breathing. Um, <clears throat> anxiety um, is the feeling where, um, like, I know a lot of uh, my friends have struggled with this and they come to me about this. And uh, anxiety is the feeling where you um, stay up at night, uh, you stare at your ceiling and ask yourself like a million questions and then lay there and debate whether you want to know the answers. Um, you walk around wondering if anybody truly cares about you and who is just using you. Um, uh, is that what you meant to be? The last one, one shout out to you. Yeah, yeah, shout out to the kids. Woo! Excellent. Thank you. Fabulous. Um, one thing, it's uh, shout out to all the kids having panic attacks in um, bathrooms because of their oral presentation in school. Like inside, before I came here, I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> um, all the kids who struggle to eat, eat in public, um, all the, to all the kids who can't get, who can't get out of bed in the morning to go to school. Um, shout out to every single person who is struggling with a mental disorder and doing their best to live a normal life because you're going to get through this. Um, depression is caring too much. Anxiety is not caring at all, and both of them together is like is really conflicting. Um, like when I, when this happened to me, I was just like, man, like what the heck is going on? Um, like it's all. Uh, I was just like, man, did I really deserve like everything that was happening to me? Um, like I have, uh, I did self harm a while ago, but that's long since over. Mm -hmm. um, and we all know that like, teenage years are tough, um, and it's normal to feel irritable um, when you're depressed. It can feel like nobody understands, but depression and anxiety is far more common in teens than you may think. Um, you're not alone, and your depression is not a hopeless case. I think I skipped that slide. Woo! Mm -hmm. Maybe, well, you want, maybe let me sit here and you can tell me what you want me to do. Yeah, I'll just be like, hey. Um, um, even though it feels like your depression, depression will never lift, it eventually will. If your feelings become so overwhelming that you can't see any solution besides harming yourself or others, you need to get help right away. Um, 
and yet asking for yourself when you're in the midst of such strong emotions can be really tough. If talking to a stranger might be easy, easier for you, um, call 1-800-273-TALK. Um, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, I learned about this when I was in the 8th grade, um, before my friend committed suicide. Um, and you can call this number in the United States to speak in confidence to someone who can understand and help you to deal with your feelings. And if you don't want to speak, um, there is actually an online text chat where you can go, you put in your name and your zip code. It's, you just go to their, um, you go to their website, you put in, you can, you don't have to put in your name, but you can put in like an alias, just like, you know, you can put like, you can say, if your name, if your name is like Megan, you can say like Donna or something. Um, but, uh, if you don't, like I said, there's, if you don't want to speak, there's the online text chat that's available. Um, if you're going through something right now, but you don't know if you can talk to anyone about it, um, the steps that I'm going to talk about later on, um, or on later, the steps, the, the steps that I'm about to talk to you about can uh, help get you there. Um, I think it's the next slide. Woo! There we go. Um, teen suicide. Uh, thousands of teens commit suicide each year in the United States. In fact, suicide is the second leading cause of death in people ages 15 to 24. Um, and suicide does not just happen. Um, studies show that at least 90% of teens who kill themselves have some type of mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, uh, drug or alcohol abuse, or a behavior problem. Um, they may also have these may also have problems at school or uh, with friends, or family, or a combination of all these, and some teens have been the victims of sexual or physical abuse. Um, others may be struggling with issues related to sexual identity, um, and usually they have uh, those problems uh, for some time. And most teens, um, they don't spend a long time planning to kill themselves. Uh, they may have thought about it or tried it in the past, but only decide to do it after an event that produces feelings of failure or loss, such as uh, getting in trouble, um, having an argument, breaking up with like your girlfriend or boyfriend, or receiving a bad grade on a test. Um, more teenagers and young adults die from, um, die from suicide than from cancer, heart disease, AIDS, birth defects, stroke, pneumonia, influenza, and chronic lung disease combined. Um, and, each day that in, um, and each day in our nation, there is an average of over 5,400 attempts, um, suicide attempts by young people ages grades 7 to 12. Um, and four out of five teens who have committed suicides have given uh, clear warning signs. Mm -hmm. You go to the next slide, I think. Okay, go back. No, not time for that one yet. Um, the 10 teenagers uh, out of 100,000 decide to kill themselves. And I was like, I, like, I was looking up statistics and I was just like, man, these numbers can't be ignored. Um, educating our teens about suicide in school and at home can help reduce the numbers uh, while allowing teens to express their feelings and communicate their problems freely with someone who can help save their lives as well. And something um, that I'm going to share when I was at Wild Live this past summer, um, which I really enjoyed because I met a lot of amazing people there. Um, that my alarm went off in class and I was just like, man, I forgot to shut it off. I know, I'm usually there. Yeah, and, but um, I went to Wild Eye this past summer, which stands for Youth Leadership Institute. I'm not sure how to describe it, but it was an amazing experience and I learned a lot of things like about youth leadership, but there was one thing that really stuck with me there, um, which was, or two things. There was the art room, where you could go if you had like great time or whatever, um, time in between like presentations where you could go into the art room you could like draw on the whiteboards i actually draw a starry night on the whiteboard with dry erase markers um but i drew like a bunch of stuff in there and then there was also this thing called the identity room um i forget like um like we had a bunch we had like social issues on the wall such as race um sexuality um and uh, things along the line of that, and that, like, I wrote poems on the board, and I performed an original poem at the open mic night, which was really awesome. I, like, and I'm still friends with a lot of people um, that I met there. Um, 
I took that paragraph out, I guess. Um, but I'm still friends with um, this uh, guy who is actually was actually recognized because he's at my friend Salim Salim. Um, we joked, his, he's Muslim, but he joked about a uh, name so nice, you gotta say it twice. <laughs> um, but like I was talking to him the other day, and he's just like, Megan, you're gonna do fine, you're gonna do great on this presentation. Um, like, I'm really proud of you and all the work that you're doing. Um, and um, then I met this one um, guy named Christopher Marcotte. And <laughs> the first time I saw him, he was wearing like a pinstripe suit or whatever that he had made himself. He was wearing like a white pinstripe suit that he had paint splatters all over. And he had like red hair and I was just like, man, who is this guy? Right? <laughs> you no, know, because he was like carrying around a ukulele and I was like, but we started talking in the art room when he saw me um, drawing Starry Night and for that, like, that entire time, like he woke up sick on the last, like really sick on the last day. So I skipped breakfast and I was just like, man, like I was like I would take care of him. Like I got I got him like um I got him like ginger ale and like crackers or whatever. But I met him there and um I met like those two I've talked to the most. Um Chris is actually from New Hampshire, which is where I'm originally from. Um but yeah. Um uh, some kids commit suicide because their parents are too hard on them about their grades or they were say or they um uh, received a bad grade on the test. Um, kids at school are bullying them because they're poor, or they don't have the newest phone, or the best clothes, or they're gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, whatever. Um, and there are parents that resent their children because of their sexuality. And that's um, another thing that I talk to parents about when they're like this. I'm just like, let me stop you right there. When you were carrying your child, or your wife was carrying your child, you said you'd love your child no matter what, if it was a boy or a girl. So now you're here, 16 years later, kicking out your child because your Jason was born in Jessica. <laughs> um, kids can face bullying at school, but also online, and I myself have actually been the victim of cyberbullying uh, last year in a drum corps group chat on uh, this messaging app called Kick. There are apparently a group of people in there that didn't like me, and I didn't know that they didn't like me because they never came to me about not liking me or whatever, and I'm gone. And they decided to make it everybody hates making group chat. Um, and then they started bashing me. Um, and this went out for a month before I found out who they were because they had made new accounts on there. Um, so I wouldn't know who they were. And we found out. Um, and then when I found out, my friends and I, we went to this, uh, like, and some of these people were like admins of the group chat who weren't supposed to be doing this. Um, my friends and I. Um, like one of one of my friends and a couple or one chat admin who we all call Midori um, so, um, stood up for me and like some stories of cyberbullying and bullying don't end up with your friends helping you they don't end up with them sticking up for you some are bystanders because they don't want to um, get hurt themselves and some end in suicide like my friend Andrea um, another victim of this he was in the fifth grade his name was Ryan Halligan have you guys heard of Ryan Halligan um, well, Ryan Halligan, um, I believe he was 13 or 14 years old, and there was this girl or whatever that decided it would be funny to make it seem like that she liked him a lot, and um, like if he, he would get constantly, he was constantly cyberbully whenever he logged into like his, like, I don't know what account it was, but he would log in and like people would be cyberbullying him um, after this girl was just like, ha ha ha, I don't actually like you or something. It's, um, and he hung himself. His, his, um, Ryan Halligan's dad, um, works for IBM, or worked for IBM at the time, and his dad was on a business trip, um, when his, like, his mom, um, when she found him, his sister, um, Ryan Halligan's sister was the first one to find him because his, like, his mom was woken up by his little sister screaming because she's just like, and so her, um, Ryan's mom got up out of bed and ran to his room and saw Ryan hanging. Um, and so, um, Ryan's mom called, uh, Ryan's dad and was just like, dude, you gotta come home, like, right now, because Ryan's dead. Mm. And his dad was on there and was just like, Ryan's dead. Um, but that's something that I present, that that's something that's, it's, there all are a lot of cases of teen suicide in the news, and I'm sitting here and I'm just like, man, somebody's gotta talk about it sooner or later. Um, uh, next slide. 
Um, there's always another solution, even if you can't see it right now. Um, many kids who have attempted suicide and survived um, say they did it because they mistakenly felt that there was no uh, other solution to a problem that they were experiencing. At the time, they could not see another way out, but in truth, they, really, they didn't really want to die. Um, remember that no matter how horribly you feel, these emotions will pass. Uh, having thoughts of hurting yourself or others does not make you a bad person. Um, depression can make you think and feel things that are out of character. Um, no one should judge you or condemn you for these feelings if you are brave enough to talk about them. Um, if your feelings, whoa. If your feelings, oh, this way. If your feelings are uncontrollable, uncontrollable, tell yourself to wait 24 hours before you take any action. Um, this can give you time to really think things through and give yourself some distance from the strong emotions that are plaguing you. Uh, during this period, try to talk to someone uh, you love, like call the suicide hotline or use the text chat. There's another um, another website I use called emotionalbaggagechat.com, where you can go on there and you can either um, check your baggage, your emotional baggage, or you can carry it for somebody. Um, so, like, that's a website that I use and I go on, and I'll, um, that, that's what I use because I know there are a lot of people out there struggling with problems um, relating to sexuality or problems that they might be having with their partner or, um, or whatever. Uh, next slide, please. If you're afraid you can't control yourself, make sure you're never alone. Um, even if you can't verbalize your feelings, just uh, stay in public places, hang out with your friends or family members, or go to a movie, but anything um, to keep from being by yourself and in danger. Um, above all, do not do anything that could result in permanent damage or death to yourself or others. Uh, remember that suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Help is available and all you have to do is take that first step and reach out. Uh, helping a depressed friend co-worker, and in here I had forgot that I had wrote and de written depressed friend, so I had I said helping a depressed friend, co-worker, or friend, and I was just like, wow, I get it. <laughs> um, uh, depressed teens typically rely on their friends uh, more than their parents or other adults in their lives, uh, so you may find yourself or um, may find yourself in the position of being the first or the only person that they've talked to about their feelings. Um, while this may seem like a big responsibility, there are many things you do, um, many things you can do to help. Um, which is that I get that person to talk to you. Because starting a conversation about depression may seem like daunting at first, uh, but you can say something simple like, um, you seem really down about yourself, I really want to help you, is there anything that I can do? Um, because um, saying that you'll be there for that person is uh, like, that can be one of the, like, the best things that you can do for them. Um, but, <coughs> Oh wait, no, it's not the next slide. Okay, I forgot. <coughs> I had that up there. Um, but know that that person doesn't expect you to have the, all the answers. Um, your friend probably just needs some help, uh, or probably just needs someone to listen to someone and be so, to listen. To, uh, your friend probably just needs someone to listen and be supportive uh, by listening and responding in a non-judgmental, reassuring manner. Um, we're helping in a major way. Um, encourage your friend to get help. Uh, urge your depressed friend. Um, or co-worker um, to talk to a parent, teacher, or a counselor. Um, it might be scary for this person to admit to an authority figure that there is a problem, um, but having you there might help, so offer to go along for support. Um, that's one thing that would, um, one thing that I did with my friend. Um, uh, she messaged to me, she's just like, Megan, can you help me with something? And I'm just like, yeah, sure, what is it? And she's just like, well, I want to stop help. Uh, I want to stop self harming. Can you help me uh, get rid of my razors? And I was just like, of course. Um, and she's been one of my best friends. And she was just like, Megan, I really want to thank you for helping me because that was something that I was really struggling with for a really long time. Um, stick with your friends through hard times. Uh, depression can make people do and say things that are hurtful or strange. But your friend is going through a very difficult time, so try not to take it personally. Um, once your friend gets help, he or she will go back to you being the person you know and love. Um, in the meantime, make sure you have other friends or family taking care of you, because your feelings are important and, need to, and you need to be respected as well. Um, uh, speak up if this person is suicidal, because if your friend is joking or talking about suicide, uh, mm -hmm. giving possessions away or saying goodbye, tell a trusted adult 
immediately because your only responsibility at that point is to get your friend help and get it fast. Because um, even if you promise not to tell your friend needs your help, and it's better to have a friend who is temporarily angry with you rather than one who's no longer alive. Um, this there's these two paragraphs um, that I wrote. Um, in my uh, English class when I probably should have been doing my biology essay. <laughs> um, but I was just like, okay, I have to add something to this. And I would work, like, I showed this um, to my English teacher and, uh, and uh, um, some of my friends on Facebook. Um, I don't... She switched sides? Uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, but it's... Uh, a lot of, like what I'm saying right here is stay strong because we'll get through it. And um, this here is, uh, it's, um, it's uh, please don't commit suicide because to quote Tom Hiddleston, you never know what's around the corner. It could be everything or nothing. You keep putting one foot in front of the other and then one day you look back and you climb a mountain. Um, you could look in the mirror and hate what you see, but mirrors are just glass and you're more than that. Um, people get so cut up on like one small thing that they don't like, like their hair or their nose or their face or the acne that they have or something. But things like salt and baking powder go into cake, and those things are pretty gross alone, but the cake turns out pretty freaking delicious. Um, realize the fact that one day does not equal a bad life, and you have so much time ahead of you for so many wonderful things to happen, like, you know, graduate school, go to college, get your degree, get married, have your first child. Um, but so many wonderful things are going to happen. Remember that Olympic ice skaters fall on their quest for gold, professional singers forget the words, authors can't figure out what to write, and yet they still pick themselves up and keep going, because it might not always be easy. Um, sometimes it's the hardest thing in the world, but the ice skater makes the next jump, the singer finishes the song, the author finishes the book, and you're going to get through this. Uh, this is just a chapter in your life. Turn the page, don't close the book. Stop calling yourself a failure, because there are planets and stars in your eyes, and there are fires and oceans in your veins. Your head is a forest, and your heart is a meadow, and you are a work of art. You have a little bit of, I want to save the world in you, and I want you to know that it's okay if you only save one person, and it's okay if that person is you. Now it's time for the activity. <laughs> wow, that was... I need you to take a piece of paper. You don't need a pen to stick. So, I want you to take this piece of paper and rip it up. Rip it. Email, um, and it's one of the two emails that I've always kept in my uh, 
on my iPad. It's one from my friend, Serge, who has a band um, named Under Control, which is really awesome. Um, but, uh, but he gave me like a free, he gave it, like I told him I couldn't afford his band's album, so he gave me a free download. But he knows what I've struggled with, and he sent me like a message along with this, and he's just like, Megan, sometimes the people we never imagine anything of do the things no one can imagine. I pray that this blesses you to see the light that you really are. And when he said that, that was just like, I started crying. <laughs> Um, but Ken's birth, Ken Ginsburg, in his, um, he said to me, Thank you so much, Megan, for the warm and generous feedback. You are so very brave and strong, not to just have survived, but to be committed to having your experience help others. Somehow your pain will be turned around to position you to impact positively on the world. In the meantime, stay strong and continue to grow. Remember that part of being strong is seeking help from others. You deserve to heal fully so you can do the good, so you can do the good work you are destined to do. Best to you, Ken. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I, like, I got that in the middle of school, and I was just like, oh god, Megan, you can't cry now. <laughs> um, but he's, um, Dr. Ginsburg uh, spoke about fostering resilience, and it stuck with me so much that I wanted to share it with you. Um, the story of actually how I got his book. I was on the Youth Advisory Council, and I was on the end panel where they, they asked me, um, like, questions about the, uh, like, uh, like, about the conference. And like what I like about it and whatnot. Um, but the first thing, like I like I got that. Um, like I, and I spoke a lot about um, uh, Dr. Ginsburg. And there was a raffle. Um, they were raffling off uh, one of his book, um, Foster or Building Resilience. Um, and I was just like, man, I really love this book, but I didn't have any money, and I couldn't enter the raffle because I was being paid to be there. Um, and I spoke. The lady who had won the book in the raffle came up to me after, and she was just like, Megan, I, like, I feel that I learned enough from his keynote speech and um, from the breakout session that he did, and I was wondering if you wanted to have this book because you spoke so passionately about what he taught you, and I was just like, <laughs> I was like, I was really happy about it, and I got off the stage, and I was just like, man, thank you. <laughs> and, um, Going. There we go. Um, the seven seeds of resilience uh, starts with competence. Um, when we notice what young people are doing right and give them opportunities to develop important skills, they feel confident. Um, we undermine competence when we don't allow young people to recover themselves after they fall. Um, competence. Young people need confidence to be a man, to be able to navigate the world, uh, think outside the box, and recover from challenges. Uh, connection. Con connection. Uh, connections with other people, schools, and communities offer young people that security that allows them to stand on their own and develop creative solutions. Um, character. Young people need a clear sense of right and wrong and a commitment to integrity. Um, something, there was uh, one of the neighborhood kids that I grew up with. Um, like, his parents, like, his dad was in jail. His, like, the place that he was living wasn't a really good example of right and wrong, and he, um, he started doing drugs for a while, um, and recently my mom and I ran into him, or my mom ran into him at the Circle K in Farmington, and he was working there, and he's just like, you know, Mrs. Bonte, um, I'm not doing drugs anymore, I've applied to go back to school and get my GED, and I'm working here, I've got myself back on my feet, I'm not doing drugs anymore, and I have a feeling that my mom was a positive example for him, because like he would always be over our house, like, he would be hanging out, we have a picture when I was like four years old, of us on the big wheel he got for his birthday. <laughs> um, uh, contribution. Uh, young people who contribute to the well-being of others will receive gratitude rather uh, than condemnation. Uh, they will learn that contributing feels good and may therefore easily turn to others and do so without shame. Um, coping. Young people who possess a variety of healthy coping strategies um, will be less likely to turn to dangerous quick fixes and rest such as self-harm, like drug or alcohol abuse, um, and control. Young people who understand privileges and respect are earned through demonstrated responsibility um, and will learn to make wise choices and feel a sense of control. I'm going to grab my beauty because my throat really oh, sorry, David. You got what you need? No, I got my gift. Okay. I came prepared. Yes, you did. I came prepared that we were. Sorry. <laughs> Gatorade doesn't cheat that because it will just like right up the top. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like when you open a bag of chips and like, it's 
Yeah, I just paid five dollars for a bag of hair. Another thing you need to do while dealing with this um, is identifying the real or the paper tigers. This is something that Dr. Ginsburg said, and um, he was just like, um, is this a small thing that I don't really need to worry about? Is this thing not going to hurt me? Or is this a real thing that could really come around by me? Um, the first step um, to dealing with your anxiety, it's the first step to dealing with your anxiety and your stress. Um, and that's to distinguish whether or not it can physically hurt you. Um, steps to deal with your stress. Woo! Um, make the problem manageable. A, first decide if a problem is a real tire or it just feels like one. Um, if it can't hurt you, chances are that it can be better handled with clear thinking. Um, this means turning off those thoughts uh, that make you interpret the situation as a disaster. Two is to take care of your body. Um, exercise is the most important part of a plan to manage stress. When you're stressed, your body is saying, run, so get out and do it. Because exercise, exercise every day to control stress, control stress and build a strong and healthy body. Um, you may think that you don't have time to exercise when you're most stressed, um, but that's exactly when you need it the most. Um, if you're stressed about an assignment but too nervous to sit down and study exercise, you'll be able to think better after you've used up those stress hormones. And some people exercise before school because they can focus and learn better, but like a point that I made to the kids in the class, I'm just like, yeah, but that's probably not going to happen because I know like none of us want to wake up at like 5 in the morning. One thing is to take instant vacations. Um, sometimes the best way to de-stress yourself is to take your mind away to a more relaxing place. Um, uh, visualize. Have a favorite place where you can imagine yourself relaxing. This place should be beautiful and calm. When you're stressed, sit down, lean back, take deep breaths, close your eyes, and imagine yourself in, a, in your calm place. Dr. Ginsburg was just like, man, I imagined myself on like a really warm island like the Bahamas or something. Um, <laughs> Um, take time out for yourself because everyone deserves time for themselves. Like a bubble bath or something that allows you time to think and de-stress. Um, like I said, try a warm bath with your ears just underwater. Listen to yourself. Take deep and slow breaths. Um, take your pulse and count as your heart rate goes down. Um, enjoy hobbies or creative art as an instant vacation. That's a, one of the reasons that I really liked uh, the art room at YLI. Um, look at the beauty around you and get pleasure from the small things you may have stopped noticing. Like yesterday, I was on the walk home with my friend Brianna. We took um, the trail home that comes out right near the Metro Caps in Springville. And I was just like, wait, Brianna, we gotta stop and take pictures because this looks really cool. And I was just like, um, but, like, I'm, I love photography. That's why I volunteer to record everything. Um, also, sorry, I wasn't here last week. I think I said that, or last um, month. I was really sick. I had to be. I was in the hospital for like a day, mm -hmm. or like for a few hours because I was uh, like I kept like throwing up and I was really dehydrated. And now someone wouldn't see us until Thursday, so my mom just like Megan were taking me to the hospital, and I was just like, oh god. <laughs> um, part um, part four is that helping um, helping a little can make the world better and help you feel better. Um, young people who work to make the world better have a sense of purpose, feel good about themselves and handle their own problems better. Um, it's important to understand that you really can make a difference in other people's lives. The role of teenagers is to recognize the mistakes adults have made and build a better world. Um, some, one of the things that I uh, ended my um, presentation with at school, I have right here, and it's, uh, okay, can you have the next slide? Do I have the next slide? No, I don't. It's just a blank slide. Sorry. Um, but yeah, we're getting to the end of the presentation. But one thing, like there are friends that were in the classes that I know have been struggling with this. Um, so I was, um, I was just like, your skin is in paper, so don't cut it. Your face is in a mask, but don't hide it. Your size is in a book, so don't judge it. Your life is in a film, don't end it. End it. Anyone can give up because it's the easiest thing in the world to do, but to hold it um, together when everyone thinks that you're going to fall apart. Um, that's that's true strength. That's resilience. And I wanted, and I was just like, you need to tell yourself that you are strong because you know your weaknesses. You are beautiful because you are aware of your flaws. Um, you are fearless because you learn to distinguish between real and paper tigers. You are wise because you learn from your mistakes. You are a lover because you have felt a hate, and you can laugh because you have shown that you have no sadness. Um, 
that's one thing. Uh, my mom, probably one of the most resilient people that I know, and I'm like, it's, I love her to pieces because, like, I don't know where she is. She was supposed to be here. <laughs> I have, I gave her the address, and I'm just like, mom, be here at eight. She's just like, okay. Um, but um, probably one of the most resilient people that I know, and like she was, like she's just like, Megan, you're gonna do great today. I'm really proud of you, and all this work that you're doing to honor your best friend. Um, my friend, I have a friend that lives in the United Kingdom, and she um, has been struggling with this for a while. Um, there was one time that the day her boyfriend broke up with her was the day that she got her antidepressants, so she decided to overdose. But I'm glad that she made it, and she has attempted suicide. Uh, since then, but I'm just like, but I'm always there for her no matter what. Like, I'm just like, Harry, I literally have my iPad set so it only goes off when certain people message me. So, if you need me, I'm always here because, like, I'll have it set to like the highest thing so I know it'll wake me up. I'll put it right beside my head. Mm -hmm. So, if anybody needs me, I'm just like, you know what, you can call me, uh, text me, whatever, because I'm always here for you. Um, and my, um, another person who's a really figure and a uh, role model for me is my um, my older sister Becca. Um, she had when she was younger, she had struggled with depression. I think she's still struggling with it now. But I'm very very proud of her, and I love her so 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 much. Um, she went to like her counselor or something, and she told me that she started crying because she's so proud of me and she loves me so much. And I'm just like, oh, Becca. <laughs> But my mom and my sister and my family have definitely been uh, big role models for me and uh, helping me um, to do something like this because this is something, this presentation I've worked a year on, over, over a year on, um, to present this people and to bring this, uh, this message to other people because it's something that I'm very passionate about. But thank you. Thank Woo. you. Like this, like research paper or something, and um, 
it's funny, he, um, the day that, like, I was, like, I had been crying for a lot of the day before, um, in the guidance office, but, like, I went to my health class, and I fell asleep in class, and that was the first time I had ever fallen asleep mm -hmm. in class, but I wake up when the bell goes off, and he didn't wake me up, or, in, but something that's something that <coughs> I really admired about him, because he's, he's an awesome teacher, um, but, uh, like, the steps that I went through, I went, like I said, I went to Miss Sylvain, and I, uh, like, I was just like, hey, I have this presentation I've worked a while on. Um, can you show this to the health teacher? Um, I had Mrs. Walker. I think Mrs. Walker. Um, I've been here for a year and a half, and I still don't know everybody's name. <laughs> um, but Mrs. Walker uh, came up to me on the day we had the pep rally for the homecoming game. Um, and she's just like, Megan, um, Mrs. Sylvain showed me the script for the, for the script that you have for your presentation. Um, and apparently Miss Sylvain just like handed it to her. Um, but she's just like, hey, I read through your script and I was wondering if you wanted to come present it to the health classes. And I was just like, hex to the yeah. Like I've been waiting for like I've been waiting forever to present this. And I was just like, yeah man, I'll do it. And she's just like, man. And I was just like, okay, so next week we have our presentation or like our um, like our unit on like bullying. And she was just like, okay, so Wednesday, um, she had the classes for the first three blocks that came in during the last 45 minutes of those blocks to come and present. And yeah, that's 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 what I did. You had something. You had something. Like that. It's a request. Okay. Based upon your your experiences as well as what is obviously a strength in seeing a situation and working through it and coming up with solutions not just for yourself, but for a whole lot of people. It's my understanding that the Sanford School Committee is looking, every year they're, they're looking for a couple of student representatives. Oh, the Sanford, like I saw you, that. You saw that. I and saw that in school. My request is that you should be one person who applies. Yeah, like I was that. thinking about applying for it. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I think you've got it out. I think you've got it out. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? <laughs> Do you think that fostering the arts would be a better outlet for kids in high school? I do. Junior high? I do. Um, because I know that a lot of my friends when I lived in Farmington, um, there were kids who would take the guitar classes or go to their mm -hmm. art classes or something because like music or art or something would be the way that they express themselves. Um, and get those feelings out because that's that's a healthy way of coping with your feelings rather than uh, substance abuse or uh, self harm. And I know that music and band have definitely helped me. I wrote a speech for our marching band banquet um, this Friday because, like I said, we ended our season. This is the first time the Stanford band has ever gotten a gold medal, and everybody was very very proud. And, like we were all standing there at attention on the field, and we're getting our scores, and everybody's just like. Oh, no. Like everyone is like crying and after like all the instructors are like jumping around like hugging each other because we did take a lot of risks uh, on the show like we did like we've never done anything like the, like the show before um, but all the hard work and the practice hours definitely paid off and yeah not all the kids play sports is what I said yeah there are there, um, there are kids um, my friend um, specifically my friend Sarah who I call Mama Duck. Mm -hmm. um, she's actually a senior this year, but uh, she plays field hockey and she does marching band at the same time. Yeah. Oh, wow. And That's she, tough. Yeah. yeah. You were great entertainment at the football game. Oh, yeah. so you oh. enjoyed it. Really yeah, once it got cold out there, though, it, it, it was. Yeah, we had like some no sound. Yeah. sound. Yeah. But there was one football game where we had to play at the end where everybody left and we only had the parents in the stands. <laughs> but we're just like, you know what, this is a performance. We're going to perform. We don't care if there's five people there or if there's 20 people there or good practice. more than that. It's practice. We have yeah. finals soon. So. Megan, good for you. Can you send me your presentation? Is that right if I send that out with um, the coalition mailing list? Okay, no, I, I wish that one more question here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that you had done a, um, a slide on the suicide prevention line. Yeah. Did you do a slide? For, you had mentioned one other website, and I think it was on depression. You had mentioned another website. Oh, emotional baggage. Yeah. Could yeah. you add that to your <coughs> presentation? Yeah. Spell it out for me. 
Um, it's just emotional baggage check. Emotional baggage check. Dot com. Mm -hmm. It'll come, like, if you Google it, emotional baggage check, it'll come right up. Is that, that like a weird thing? That thing or? Or? Mm -hmm. Only because I'm, I'm going to, on my Facebook page for Parks and Recreation, indicate that I've come to your once presentation mm -hmm. and maybe indicate some of these sites because mm -hmm. I, I know there are some of my staff mm -hmm. who may be in the, the situation that, yeah. that you have been in at one point in time. Yeah, this and it might help them. Yeah, this is something that, like I said, I've been waiting for a long time to present this. Um, but like I was talking to my mom before, like I said, like she's literally, my mom is literally like my biggest fan. That's <laughs> great. That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like she would come, and I was just like, Mom, this isn't something that I just want to present to the school here. This isn't something that I just want to present to the coalition. I want to go everywhere with this, mm -hmm. and I want to go as far as I can with this because this is a serious problem, and it needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to just check in with me afterwards, I'm connected to the Maine Youth Suicide Prevention through NAMI. I don't know if you are, but they have a lot of trainers and trainers, and they do have a youth guild, if you will. Oh, oh we'll do that. Maybe I can get you in touch with them. Oh, that they are doing it at, on a state level and it's funded and mm -hmm. they are part of the LD690 which mandates that all faculty and fingerprinted town school employees are trained in this and now they're moving towards trying to get kids um, mm -hmm. um, like a, a required suicide awareness um, and yeah. it's their curriculum but a lot of it's yeah. similar type of stuff I and mean, the research is a research. And, yeah, you know, I make it, please do make that connection because I, yeah, I, I have been through like, I don't right. know, two or three professional suicide gatekeeper trainings, all day ones. And I have to say, in your, you know, 45 minute presentation, you hit every high spot. And I think because you're a youth and you've experienced this, it was really powerful. And I do think, I, it seems like it's so true that, that young people can hear that and learn that better from other young people and I really really I think you do have a mission and a calling and you, and whatever we can do to help support you in getting that out there yeah. we will do because that was really powerful. Yeah I told myself I wasn't gonna cry. I can't cry out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How can we get you? What's your contact information Megan? My contact information? Um, I can actually crap I, for, I actually made business cards for so I put them on them. I know it. Something else. Oh. Megan Monty, M-E-G-A-N. B-O-N-T-I. 123 at gmail.com. I also have a Facebook page, which y'all should go like. It's, um... I want to write this one down. That was yes, proud of this. <laughs>
you're the only one that has um, all these traits and all these personality traits. You're you and you're special and you're the only you there. And um, if like if uh, they're religious, I'll just be like, you know what? God made you, though there's only one you. Um, so we need that. Yeah. We need that. We yeah. need you because you're unique in this world and you're you're a wonderful person, so please don't take your life because there are so many people around you that love you and care about you and don't want you to be gone. Yeah, and it's called The Bridge. It's a documentary that was out yeah. in 2006. Mm -hmm. It's called The Bridge. The one about mm -hmm. the gate Golden Gate. Mm -hmm. They did a subsequent, yes. they did research yeah. from that and mm -hmm. around basically really establishing in the, what they call in Middle East. Mm -hmm. that people who yeah. attempt suicide. So I, I, have, report that. Exactly. I had a very, very close friend of mine um, attempt suicide twice. Um, mm -hmm. she, she's actually in her 30s. And um, I remember going to visit her at the hospital the first time. She had, she had attempted it. Um, it was a pill overdose. And I just remember when I visited her, I know her so well. I know a lot of her, all of her secrets and all of the, and but nothing you, ever but, seen. But like you really like didn't know that that was happening. Had no so like, idea. So when I asked her, I was like, well, Because why? With, with my friend, uh, Drea, like, yeah. um, like I said, like 90% of youth give clear warning signs, but mm -hmm. sometimes we don't really see those warning signs. And sometimes it's too late to fix it. Um, because they do um, take their own life. Um, I had a friend. Um, this is um, uh, one, of my, one of my friends that lives down in Texas. Um, he's like we're all like we have like a big group of friends um, online that are really like uh, like we're all um, it's uh, we're all fans. And yeah, I'm a teenager, but I like Power Rangers. I grew up with that. Like, I grew up with that. Yeah. Like, Power Rangers Lost Galaxy is my favorite season. Um, but uh, like, we're all fans of um, all fans of that, and we'll like a lot of uh, our friends in that group. We're called the RRA, which is the Ranger and Rider Alliance. Um, it's uh, Power Rangers, Kamen Rider, and Super Sentai. Super Sentai is the TV show that Power Rangers is based off of. Literally and like the Power Ranger stuff, we we take like a lot of the fighting scenes are from Super Sentai, <laughs> but um, we're all we're all like big fans of that. But whenever like somebody in our group is like going through something, we're we're all just like, man, like we're all here for you. This is a group of like on on the messaging app that we have. This is like a group of like thirty five people that is like completely behind you. We'll support you through anything. There are friends that I know. Um, there who have been struggling with sexuality or relationship problems um, and we're just like man we're, we're here for you if you need anything just like text us call us but we're just a group of people who um, love and care about like everybody we don't care like who you are or where you've come from or what's happened to you before we don't judge you like like I said you could be like gay lesbian transgender uh, pansexual green blue purple whatever right. we don't care <laughs> Just as long as you're not like mean or rude to anybody, it's, it's just like support. It's, it's just support. support. It's, it's just like support. It's a big support. support system. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what makes the difference. Yeah. Is that the people, the teenagers, feel like they're alone. You know, they don't have. Yeah. That. I think too, like this awareness, like the training that you're doing and just talking about mm -hmm. it, like it reduces that stigma yeah. and it normalizes it. It gives people yeah. like, a safe place to talk about it because I'm sure everyone in here has been touched by suicide. And yeah, like my, mom, my, my mom told me a story about how one of the no. friends laid down in the middle of the highway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I just think it's really important that we yeah. talk about it. I mean, who in this room has had a family member or a friend commit suicide? That's too many. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly, like I said. Um, Suicide is the leading cause of death in ages people 15 to 24. Um, I think I might have hit that point before mm -hmm. you had, um, before those, um, had, um, you had arrived, but I can pull it up again. Hey, um, let me ask you a question. Mike, I think it's too big of a question for you to necessarily answer right now, but if you could maybe give it some thought and then put it into your presentation, because one of the things you started with is saying, you know, why aren't we doing more about this, right? Yeah. So I would love for you to think about what ways that, and you might want to even ask your group about this, put it out there as a kind of chat question, what are the things that we as a coalition, because you know, one of the things about these coalition meetings is that we, we hope to be, to be able to take action, you know, and, and to have really be a working group. What are things that we as a coalition, or what are things that um, Sanford High School, uh, or what are things other community organizations can do to 
um, to, as you say, like do something about this. You know, clearly some stuff is being done. You know, there's there's training, there's support networks, and stuff's being done. But as you pointed out, it's not enough. Right? We need to be, we're not. We need to be doing more. Can you think about what? Can you and your and your friends and just really think yeah. about what what we could do as a coalition, what we could yeah. do as a community, what we could do as a school? Yeah. Differently and more. And if you all know of other places that I can come present this, present this, definitely email me, message my Facebook page. We'll put that um, on the, the notes. Yeah, definitely, definitely do that because I'm like I said, I'm definitely looking to come present this um, to just more than like four groups. Um, one of the things that I had hit before um, you guys had arrived was um, more teenagers and young adults die from su um, die from suicide than from cancer, heart disease. AIDS, birth defects, stroke, pneumonia, influenza, and chronic lung disease combined. Um, it's the second leading cause of death in ages between 15 to 24. Um, and each day in America, there are over 5,400 attempts by people, um, by young people, eight, um, grades 7 to 12, and four out of five teens who have attempted suicide have given clear warning signs. Um, there's actually a book that I had read my freshman year. I forget what it's called, but this kid who was always like, um, like always got A's or whatever, like high honor roll student. Um, he had received like an F on a test or a report card, and this had never happened to him before. But he um, soaked his bathrobe in gasoline and set himself on fire. Oh. Oh. Um, and I have read it, like I uh, like I forget like most of what the like I forget the like the book title, um, but like. It's like I, like when I was younger, I'd be sitting and like we like we I'd see that on the on the news like I'd see like a murder suicide on the news and I was just like well I know what murder is but what suicide because um, I didn't like I didn't know what that was and then my mom told me about it and I was like I'd sit there and I would wonder I, like I want a kid um, as a kid, uh, as a younger child I would wonder like how would anybody come to that point and here I am years later wow mm -hmm. like this is this is what happens in a lot of um, this is what brings this, these people to this choice, and I'm just like, wow. Like, this is something, like, like I said, I've had, in the past two and a half years, I've had five friends um, commit suicide. And I was just like, every time this happened, I was just like, man, like, this is, like, I can't just, like, let this happen and, like, not talk about it. Like, somebody needs to talk about it, and that's why. The sad, the sad fact is, is that in, what, 80, I'm not showing my age, but by the time I was in eighth grade, we even lost two. Mm -hmm. and I so think it's, it hasn't changed in that long of yeah, a period. It's, yeah, right, it's gotten yeah, worse. Right, right. Exactly, it's gotten worse. And I, Meg, I also appreciate the fact that you, I think you made it very clear just in your in your presentation conversation that it's not, there's no certain kind of person who's at risk for suicide. All, Everybody. All, everyone is at risk for suicide. Everybody's all at risk for suicide. Every social economic status from every, um, you know, whether they're high achieving or low achieving, whether they're, you know, um, it's, it's, you know, everyone's Yeah, first, because so there's, like, there's, like, it. like I said, the, um, a point that I made, um, before, um, is that, like, people sometimes, um, people fake, like, they're happy, so people don't worry about them. Mm -hmm. Like, there's somebody in this room that could be struggling with it and not telling anybody because they're too afraid to say anything. Mm -hmm. Um, there could, like, like I said, there could, like, there could be somebody in this room or like it could be like the person sitting next to you on the bus or the person ahead of you in line in the market basket. Yeah. Like they could be struggling with it. Um, Good examples for other Like Yeah. Um, oh my god. I cried. Yeah. I cried so much. Because like something like one of um, the movies that really touched me, um, I had seen in freshman year called The Dead Poet Society. Yes. Awesome movie. Uh, like he was um, like the O captain, my captain, like my friends, like oh my god, I cried so much because like he was in that movie, he was a great role model for me, and I was just like oh wow, like I had a list of people that like are like um famous and noble people that I wanted to meet, and one of them was Nelson Mandela, and he passed away. One of them was Robin Williams, and I was just like, and I was just like I like I cried, and the fact that he committed suicide by hanging, um that was the way um I was informed that my friend Andrea had committed suicide. Um, I had seen her the day that it happened. Mm -hmm. We were in the um, the uh, Cum at Cumberland Farms, and I was just like, "Oh, hey, oh, hey, Drea, like, or whatever." And we both got like a slushie at Cumberland Farms, and he's just like, uh, "She's just like, hey, Megan, I won't see you tomorrow. I won't be in school because I don't feel good." 
And it, it took me for like it took me a while to be like, holy crap, that was her saying goodbye to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I and then I didn't find out that it happened um, until two days later. I was in the school gymnasium, um, which was where everybody had to meet before we went to our classes. And her cousin uh, Kyra had come up to me, and she's just like, um, she was just like, hey Megan, I need to tell you something. She's just like, um, Dre committed suicide, and it, like I, I was sitting there, and I was just like. And then I was I was bawling, like um, like people like people knew that I had been a really close friend of her, and like people had already found out. There were people who were like crying in their finals at the high school. Um, people like people knew that it had happened, but didn't tell me, and I didn't find out. Like I knew that somebody at the high school had committed suicide um, because it was on Facebook, but I didn't know who it was. And like I come to school and I find out that it's my like my best friend, and I'm just like holy crap, she's gone. I can't call her. Um, I can't message her on Facebook. I won't be able. I won't ever be able to see her again. And that was the thing that I was just like, like we had always done like the talent shows together. Like I remember seventh grade um, after I had seen Grace and Chance on Ellen, <laughs> I went to um, I went to the school talent show and I sang paparazzi in the talent show and uh, and uh, she sang. Um, I think it was like Pat Benatar's uh, Heartbreaker or whatever, but she sang that and I was just like, every time I hear that, I'm just like, oh god. But, um, you she's one of her, You keep her memory a lot. Yeah, because definitely, is, because yeah, every time, like, there's a script that I had written for my school assignment um, called Collision, and it's a story of um, a paralyzed teenager who was being badly bullied in her school because, because she was paralyzed and, um, like I dedicated that to her. I um, on the two year anniversary of her suicide, um, which was one of the, like was the last actually the last day of school for me last year. I took my friends and a camera out to the rotary at the school uh, under a tree, and I covered one of the songs that her mom used to sing to her when she was really down. Megan, thank you so much. No no problem. Problem. signed up for November all by herself. <laughs> it came up and, so fast. I was just like, oh my god, wait, let me start. Right. We still have a yeah. few blank months, so if anybody wants to take a, a, a month, that's great. We also, um, the uh, Sanford Strong Coalition Steering Committee, which has grown, which I'm really happy about. We have some new folks there. We, we meet at the third Tuesday of every month from 1 to 2, so it's just a short kind of you know, early afternoon meeting, one to two, the third Tuesday of every month. So we're meeting um, November, what, are you, what is that, November 17th or something? Um, yes, November 17th from, um, from one to two um, to plan our December meeting. Um, and I also want to leave where we're going we're gonna to do our, because it, it's hard to do anything after you've had this emotional thing about suicide. It's a little um, hard to do our Jenga activity. <laughs> But we'll do it next month, so we'll bring them all back. Um, but I do want to just um, uh, announce that um, part of this is in connection with a, um, uh, a an initiative that actually the Drug Free Task Force is also um, being really helpful with, and um, really and WSSR TV that Donna mentioned in our last coalition meeting, which is that we're going to try to get a short thirty second. Um, video kind of ad about every one of these 40 assets. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, we have help with um, script writing, with filming, with whatever you want to do. But if you're interested, um, we really want folks to just take, you know, young person spends three or more hours per week in lessons or practice in music, theater, or other arts. Interestingly enough, creative activity. That's the one I picked randomly. Woo! And we just I'm saw how see. incredibly important that is. So, you know, um, I, can, I mean, there would be a million ways to, to do a little cute 30 second video about that. So we're really going to try to do that this year. We want to have them on WSSR TV. We want to have them on the YouTube channel uh, account. We want to have them um, at the film festival. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I movies. Actually, we have an opportunity to put PSA in the movies actually, at the film festival. I actually work with that because I'm the film club and awesome. stuff. Awesome. Like this past year, I worked on like the behind the scenes crew. I got to meet Gunnar Hansen. It was the original Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I was just like, whoa, well, I got to have the original <laughs> Leatherface. There will be a third annual um, Stanford Film Festival, so yes. Yes. stay tuned. And it's actually um, like five days long this year, so it's oh, great. Yes. Are there any other coalition um, 
partner announcements, challenges, um, requests for help, uh, or celebrations to share? I have a celebration. Uh, on Columbus Day, uh, 300 people from Sanford and surrounding areas came to the Community's Care Day and got free socks and undies, blankets and towels and sheets, and boots and coats, as well as uh, more than 100 free haircuts from Snip and Tone, and free manicures, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and a lot of people from the coalition helped with that, so thank you. Thanks. And as a, as a segue to that, a follow-up, the um, York, any poverty in York County community practice, we've, we've, we have met three twice now. Um, it's a really powerful group of about 25 people from every place, possible place you can imagine all over the county. We're gathering to see how we can continue to move Donna Beagle's work forward in the county. It's a great group. We've divided into um, a couple of different uh, advocacy and policy, um, changing the culture, and doing some um, looking at a model that maybe we can do in the county to create what we, they call an opportunity community. It's really a, a fun, great meeting. And our third meeting is Wednesday, November 18th, 2.30 to 4.30 at St. David's and Kenny Bunk. That, at that meeting, we're going to look at, at creating um, sort of more meetings and more different places where people can get involved. But um, I would really encourage anyone who is at all interest in, in, interested in that to come join us. It's totally open to the meeting and group. Um, we're trying to figure out a new way to do business. We're trying not to go down the old path. <laughs> so it's challenging, but exciting. Um, I think, yes, well, right. Um, Part of the Healthy Communities, we, a lot of the programs that we promote have to do with health and wellness, of course. So we are offering $500 mini grants for any small business, large business um, that wants to work on employee wellness. So, you know, this kind of piggybacks what Megan was saying, that, you know, physical activity, feeling healthy, keeping your body healthy. We spend so much time at work that there are ways at work that we can work to stay healthy. So we're offering $500 mini grants to businesses that want to form a wellness team or to um, come up with some kind of initiative to uh, address the play wellness. Great. So I got the flag uh, here. Will you send point. that to me? I'm going to send that out in the coalition yeah. minutes. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Yeah, and, and again, remember, Joanne, and I would say Joanne is on vacation. Um, she's with her daughter and grandson in Florida for a couple of weeks, so we're very happy she's there, but we're very sad she's not here. <laughs> this morning, we're like, okay, what do we do? <laughs> Joanne has been so great at, the, at coordinating to keep these coalition meetings going. And she does these beautiful announcements, so remember, send them in, put, it, uh, put them on the webpage, or there's, you know, um, just get them to us, email us even, just, and we'll get them in the announcements and on, online. Um, thank everybody for coming. Bring a friend next time. I mean, you know, I'm, I do. I think I've had a presentation like this is so valuable. If we can start getting more people at these coalition meetings, you know, I, I think every one of them is really valuable. Let's start bringing. Let's grab a friend and bring them in. Yeah. Our January fifth meeting is actually my second.